Today on The Real. Michael Jackson played by a white actor on Girl Chat. We have amazing, amazing actors, actors that just play give somebody a chance. And this winner look good and feel good. The Real showing you how. Plus, hip hop mogul Russell Simmons. And fashion emergency, don't fret, it's my style solution. Then, meatless Monday night dinners. You won't eat meat, but you still get that ooey gooey delicious cheese in your life. The Real. Controversial casting. Actor Joseph Fiennes is set to play Michael Jackson in a new British TV movie. All right, I see you see the photo right there. The film tells the story of the time when MJ allegedly teamed up for a road trip with two other icons, Elizabeth Taylor and Marlon Brando, post 9 11. Now, an unusual tale for sure, but is this unusual casting? Tamara. <clears throat> Should we be offended <laughs> by the casting because of the race difference? <sighs> okay, you guys. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not offended. I am genuinely, utterly confused. Like, what you mean? <laughs> well, because, I mean, I, I'm not a casting director. I'm not a filmmaker. But uh, they do, in a weird way, resemble each other. Um, because the, the, the movie is about Michael Jackson post- um, 9 you know, 9 11, and he is lighter. But I'm confused because at this that is, point, at that point, Y'all I'm confused <laughs> because this is something that has been happening more than once in the film industry. Uh, Angelina Jolie played a biracial character. Mm -hmm. She played um, Marianne Pearl. I don't know if you guys have seen Mighty Heart, and that was a huge controversial thing. And then Emma Stone um, played a half Asian in um, Aloha. So I'm, ju I'm just confused as to why casting directors aren't giving amazing um, actors and actresses of color a chance to do these to awesome play the role. roles. There's a plethora yeah. of them, yeah. of them out think, there. Do you think uh, ultimate, uh, yes. Do you think it's a fact that they're not giving them? I mean, like, do you think that they're well, saying you're Well, see, that's the thing. Are, they, are they even giving them a chance? Are uh, they auditioning? That's the question. These, question these, yes, that's the question. Are they uh, auditioning right, these actors right. and I mean, but at the first? same time, in my head, like, Samuel L. Jackson can't play Michael Jackson. Yes. Right. But, yeah, they they can, but they can <laughs> lighten his his skin just like they darkened Angelina uh, jo Jolie's I, well, skin. I the, disagree. In the play, in the play Hamilton, which is based on uh, the founding fathers, there are black characters playing like Thomas Jefferson, yes. and people like that. I think because, you know, they couldn't find anybody white that could rap really right you now. You know what? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, if you go and it's a wonderful play, Hamilton. Yeah. Love um, it. But my thing is, I, you know, and Michael was white in the 90s. I if mean, you look at him, he was, I mean, look at him. Oh, he my was. God. That's what I'm saying. So I think they kind of, it. yeah, it's like no shade. But <laughs> I think they should just, you know, if you're going to do that with Michael, then have Viola Davis play Liz Taylor. Oh, my God. And then, you know, then yeah, I would feel a little bit Or the Queen better. of England. But here's, yeah, here's you the thing. Know? What I love that you're bringing up is that, I really do believe, because I don't know, I'm not in those casting rooms. I'm not sure yeah. if it's all, you know, race, well, all races were welcome as they should be. Yes, and that's but a I, question we don't right, know, right. to be honest. But this is happening everywhere. Like, yeah. I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. Anybody else? Okay, love Harry Potter. And if you guys know, 
Hermione, she's Hermione. she yep, she's a she's a white young girl, Emma Watson, and they're now doing the play in London and they casted a black woman to play her in in the in the role. Right. And JK Rowling and Emma Watson themselves said, yo, we endorse this because she's a good she's a good actor. She's a great actor. So they're letting the talent speak for itself. Yeah. You know what my problem is, is that he's British. And I can't imagine saying Shimon in a British accent. I would just say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, he is an amazing actor. Excuse me, Tam. Yeah. Lonnie, how would you say Shimon in a British accent? It would be hard. I want to hear. You have a better British accent. No, that's your point. Go ahead. You want me to do it for you? Yeah, yeah. I really want you to do it. Shimon. No. See, that would sound right. It sounds too proper. Sure. But no, he's a. The thing is, honestly, he's a great actor. But you really mean to tell me you couldn't find anyone black to play That's Michael what Jackson? I'm saying. Like, you just couldn't find That's what I'm saying. anyone? That is my point. That's what I'm saying. Well, maybe so there they was no white right skinned well, we black guy. We haven't seen him well, play the role yet. Right. Okay, and so you mean to tell me there is no one that is as talented as this white man that could have played? Th that's all I'm saying. But and we, we've had people to play Michael Jackson, like Jeff, Flex Alexander. You know what? I knew she was going to say that. <laughs> what? Yeah, but guys, oh that, my God. Okay, we're talking about black what? as if I'm saying. black people come in all different colors. Yeah, but you have, and speaking so of you colors, you have to understand. Adrian, that yes. my, Michael at this time was awfully light skinned. Got it. You know? Okay. Like, but, but there, there are, are awfully light, light skinned skin black people. people. Who, can make who, even who more light. as light as Michael was so, back then? Who? Name one person right now. Who? No, that's what I'm saying. The beauty of makeup. <laughs> <That's laughs> right. No, I'm just saying. Wait, I'm just trying to about who? Wait, Chris Brown? What? Chris Brown is not as light as Michael Jackson. Okay, wait, 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 wait. we can I make the same argument. Chris Brown. There's makeup, and of course they could do that. We can make the same argument with Angelina Jolie. They put dark her makeup on her to play Marianne. She okay. was biracial. Why now, not? Why not get an amazing biracial actress? Okay, like now I'm gonna take it a step further. Okay. okay, which is a little bit more frustrating. Okay. okay. I, you know, as a minority, I think it's really hard for us to find roles in general. There yes. are, you know, not many roles yes. for us mm -hmm. to begin with. And I just think I would, I would find it frustrating as a as a minority actress. Hello. That not only are there a lot of roles for minorities, but on top of that. Now, this is going to sound crazy, Go but here it goes. It is easier, I think, in hair and makeup mm -hmm. to probably make a white person look Brown. black. OK. Versus a black person look white. True. Gwyneth Paltrow probably really could play Lonnie in a biopic. Wait a minute, what? No, with no. amazing makeup. With amazing makeup. She got a head of You look got really amazing. Really, really no, I'm <laughs> saying, I know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I just want like, everybody to know Viola Davis is playing me, okay? <laughs> That's why. Okay. You get what I'm saying? It can't go. I so I want to play us, but we can't play yeah. them. So that gives them even more roles. Okay, so let me just throw out a question. Let's just say in the casting room. Yes. Like you said, yes. they had all races, and then they had a really talented, this guy's name's Joseph. Yes. Really talented Joseph. And then a, a not so, or they haven't found somebody as talented that could look <laughs> like light brother, you know, black, whatever, black, but a black yes. person. So would you be more apt to hire the person who looks more like Michael because he looks more like That's me? That's or the person not, who's the actor. I'm that, not a casting director, but I do know a lot of politics. Come on, Lonnie. A lot of politics play into this. Absolutely. You yeah. have the big time movie studios who have a list of all the A list actors that they want to be in movies mm -hmm. because they know that they're probably going to have a much return. more of, yes, of, of, of a smash hit. Right. If you would just put um, a, a no name amazing actor. Now, the frustrating part for me as an actress, in way, way, way back in the day, you had um, white people play Asian, you had Native American, Native Americans. But this is 2016. Right. We okay, have well, amazing actors. actors. That Just can play give themselves. somebody a chance. That's okay. all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. They can That's play themselves. Well, I think so. <laughs> Let me propose this question. Yes. What if he? can really, really act like Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's, yeah, he's a on. white man, right? Yeah. So the question is, do you not give it to him? Right. No. If he's, if he can really, hold on, if he can really, really right. portray Michael Jackson in he his he best he. light, right? Yes. Because he's white? Isn't that the same right. thing? Well, and that's the reason why I, I don't want to make um, assumptions. assumptions. 
That's why I asked the question. Maybe I don't you can know move the audition. I, I don't know. I don't know the auditioning. I don't know the auditioning process. That's why I ultimately it you want the best actor or right. actress. Exactly. Okay, and, that's and, what and I just really ultimately. But give somebody else yeah, a chance to try to get there. I understand both you know your I mean? points. Absolutely. But I also have to say, and I keep going back to the Hamilton play because it was a it's historical, it's based on real people. And once you start watching that play and you see how they act, you don't even consider the color. Yeah. Right? You really, really that's don't. What I'm so that's the thing. But I understand that because of jobs and because yes. of what's happening happening right yeah, now with the Oscars. People are, are, are sensitive yeah, to yeah. who's getting the jobs and things like that. Yeah. But, you know, we'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens with this. I I'm just want Marlon it. Wayans to play Marlon Brando. Okay, let's You know what? <laughs> <Watch it. laughs> she I think it's great. great. <laughs> All right, now, another thing which has got people talking <laughs> is one mom is upset that a shop assistant told her teenage daughter that she needed to wear Spanx. <laughs> True story. Now, according to mom, Megan Harris, that's what happened when she was out out dress shopping recently with her daughter Lexi. Now, Megan went on to write an open letter to the store saying, I wish I had told you how many girls suffer from poor self-image and telling them they need something to make them perfect can be very damaging. Mm. Now, Jeannie, you're in the fashion industry, yeah. so I really want to know what do you think about the shop assistant being you think she was being helpful or do you think that she was being critical? Right. I think with all advice, you need to be asked. You need to have a little bit of a permission before you just advise Absolutely. them something that they didn't ask for. Mm -hmm. And um, first off, can we just look at this picture? This girl has a bomb body. She's gorgeous. I wish I could nail the Angelina leg like that. You know what I'm saying? You can. Right, I mean, that's amazing. So, and here's another thing to take into account, is when you're 13, everything's a big deal to you. Even if it doesn't matter, everything's huge. And Body image and confidence is something we struggle with for the rest of our life. So if I were that saleswoman, if I saw something and I'm thinking, oh, I'm just being helpful, with anybody who's underage, it's always important to pull the parent aside and ask them, would you like my advice to help shape this dress better or is there anything I can do to mm -hmm. make this experience more comfortable? comfortable Whatever it may be. But ask the parent because you have no right to tell a young girl something that could possibly putrefy her mind about herself and stay with her for maybe a lifetime. Well and I really like that the girl, see, this is the thing, too. The young lady, if you read the, the, the post, the young lady told her mama, she said, I don't want to wear this mm -hmm. dress. It'll make me look too old. But the mama was pushing it. And so it's really more about the mama felt bad because, you know, her daughter knew what she wanted. Yeah. And she was like, I don't want to wear this dress anyway. Yeah. But you're trying to push it on me. And now you're feeling bad because this person comes in and says, you know, right. stuff about yeah, Spanx right, and right. stuff like that. And I, I hate Spanx. I have to wear them every day. And I hate, I hate Spanx. I hate Spanx, too. Yeah. But let me Sorry. say. Spanx. Like a, a, I love Spanx. I, I, I don't. I, I, I never wore Spanx until after Stop I gave it. birth. Pull them up now. They keep rolling. They do roll. They do have the spirit of the roll. But I never wore Spanx until after I gave birth. Whew. And, you know, I, I kind of have a different take on it because I appreciate my stylist who was like, ooh, baby cakes, you're going to need to put a Spanx on because, you know, your, your cup runneth over when you sit down. <laughs> and, you know, I, I appreciate it because it gave me confidence, At you know? Well, I'm just saying at any age, don't, don't you want to feel confident at any age? Well, I have to agree with Jeannie. I, I mean, because when I was younger, you're just not that secure or confident just yet. So when somebody says something yeah. to you like that, you might take it a different way. But how does she take it, though? Well, I mean, was she offended or was the mama offended? That's because, what, that was my point. Yeah, because at the end of the day, she's, she's going to grow up and be a woman, right? True. I imagine if I had a daughter, I would teach my daughter all the ropes. You need to get your hair done, you need to get your nails done, get you a good girdle girl. Coming and from I'm you. Coming be... from me, but her mama didn't tell her daughter, knowing that her cup run is over, like mine <laughs> did, and say, babe, we're gonna get you a good girdle. And it's gonna give you confidence. It's gonna make you, you feel amazing. Do you think that 13 should be thinking about that at the time? Girl, you 13, you don't need no spanks, and I'm 40, and I don't need one you either. You know what? So that's <laughs> you have to do what's right for you. I do what you want to do. <laughs> I want to talk about someone we all love, and that is Nick Cannon. Yes. Cannon recently gave a shout-out to his ex-wife, Mariah Carey, and her new, soon-to-be husband, that billionaire, James Packer. <laughs> Woo! According to Vogue, Carey last week said yes to Packer after the billionaire proposed with this 35-carat oh diamond God. and platinum engagement ring. Look at that. 
And Nick wow. took to the Instagram straight away to say, hashtag all love, congratulations to Mariah and James. May God bless your future union. Hashtag great people. Oh, hashtag great couple. I think that's wonderful. Now, Tamar? Yes. Adrian, <laughs> what do you think about this? I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I think if you are not in love with the person and you're really yeah. over them, then you can wish them. You don't care. You really don't I agree. care. You only care, I think, like really care, like you want to wish them bad when you still in love with them and you want to be with them and they choose to be with somebody else. That's when you're like angry and bitter. But like if you so done with them and you were the one that were like, I don't want to be with you anyway, they find someone, you're like, yes, now I cannot feel so guilty that I didn't want them. I'm tell you, Nick did it. Please, find some happiness over there. Over there. Over there. That's what I'm saying. Nick Yonder. is smart, because he a billionaire. He might need a loan or something, yeah. so, you know. And, but it also brings up something, because a lot of our singers and women that have money yeah. are now marrying men up. You know, oh, you they're marrying up. Janet Jackson married a billionaire. Yeah. Um, Eve, the rapper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She yes. married a billionaire, and now Mariah. So, do you think that it helps when you know because they already have enough money to take care of them? Uh -huh. But do you think that it it helps? Is it true love, or do you think she's marrying for money? I feel like, you know, she's like a hopeless romantic. Mm -hmm. You know, she really wants love. She loves love. She writes about it all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't think, first of all, she does not have to marry a billionaire. Let's not get life twisted. She's close to it, thine self. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay? She lives a life of luxury, and I mean luxury. I think the first two times she married, she married for love. I might be wrong, but I think she did. And then I think now she's like, forget it. I'm just marrying, feel, and I'm marrying like somebody trying that's on my level. I and feel like you're end. trying you know. my life. <laughs> Whatever it is, Maya, we, we wish you the best. We're so yeah. happy for you. From hot hair to static electricity, split ends to dry frizz, when winter is here, a bad hair day can last an entire season. Hair easily becomes dry and damaged during this time of year from the dry indoor heating and the dry cold weather outside. But don't worry, we're going to teach you some hair tips that will keep your hair strong and healthy, whatever the weather. Come on in out of the cold because it's time to learn about winter proof hair. Okay, Miss Love. What is the first winter tip? Well, Tam Tam, I love wearing beanies, even though my co-hosts hate when I do. Tam <laughs> sure do. <laughs> They're perfect for protecting tip. hair from wind, rain, and snow. But if you're going to wear them, you should wrap your hair up with a satin scarf before putting it on. Let me show you how to do it. Now, I need an audience member to help me. So where is my girl, Katia Ruiz? <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Garden Grove, California. All right. All right. Well, thank you for volunteering, okay? Get uh, the college <laughs> done. Get the Let her breathe. <laughs> I'm like, she's not getting feel. blindfolded. Look, you take the satin <laughs> scarf and you wrap it around. Now, the satin helps to keep the moisture in your hair, and the fabric from the beanie is made out of, you know, material that can rub against the hair and cause it to become dry Lonnie. and break off. Oops, <laughs> sorry. I was gonna fix it up, okay? You gotta, then you tuck it like that. And see, she ready. <laughs> Not buying it. Lonnie's crazy. Not buying it, oh my God. <laughs> That's how you wear it. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> That girl crazy. Samara, yes. some people are super <laughs> religious with shampooing their hair every uh -huh. single morning. But shampooing can sometimes be harsh on our hair, especially during the winter. Mm -hmm. It can dry it out, and when it's dry, guys, that can cause split ends. Ooh. So, to keep your hair from drying out and to keep those split ends at bay, try washing your hair only two to three times a week instead. Also, don't forget to use a really good thick conditioner. Here's why. The heat in your home keeps you really nice and toasty, but it gives off dry heat. So the heat, along with the cold weather, also plays a part in zapping the hair of its moisture. Yuck. Since dry hair breaks easily, invest in an intense conditioner. Good. Thanks, That's awesome. Jeannie. Okay, I hope everyone is taking notes. Yeah. This is good information. It sure All right, is. Adrian. Hit us with another one. Here we go. Sometimes if you're in a hurry, you wash your hair and you run out the door letting it air dry, right? I'm not gonna lie, I'm guilty of that sometimes. <laughs> but 
leaving your house with wet hair in the winter can actually really damage it because when the moisture in your hair mixes with the cold air, it can make the hair hard and brittle. So when your hair is hard, it's more likely to break. So make sure, you guys, that you always dry your hair mm. before leaving the house. You can even just do it like this, but it's got to be dry before you leave the house. Okay. okay. Thanks, Adrian. Okay, Tay Tay, you're next. <laughs> Why, thanks, Tamara. Welcome. Well, if you've noticed that your scalp gets extra dry, itchy, and flaky when winter rolls around, I've got a simple way to combat that. First, try oiling your scalp with argon oil and then blow dry your hair on a low heat setting. You can get argon oil from any drug or beauty supply store. Sure. This will give you the moisture you need, leaving you itch free. Everybody likes yeah. to be itch free. Yeah, I don't want to be itchy. Now, how the scalp is something a lot of us ignore, but Tam, it's very important. It is That's very it. important. Well, Moist thanks, dry. guys. You're with dry. these winterproof hair tips, you'll be able to brave the cold weather with ease. It happens every day in broad daylight or the dead of the night. Nearly every woman is experiencing a fashion crisis. That's right, somewhere right now, a woman is having a style dilemma. But don't worry, I've been training for this for years and I'm here to help you guys. You sent in your fashion ills and I've got your cure. It's time for My Style Solutions. <laughs> Superhero stands. All right, ladies, give me the 411 on the Fashion 911. Okay, first up, we have a video from Amber Garcia, who's a senior at Cal State University, Monterrey Bay, and she <laughs> needs a style solution stat. Take a look. So, Jeannie, my fashion question for you is, girls my age like to go out and wear crop tops and short shorts, which is really cute and really sexy. However, that's not my style. So I was wondering what kind of outfits and style could I wear that's not too revealing, but still cute and sexy. I got it. Good to know. Okay, oh, Amber. Like mama. Got you. Yes, Amber, I love, first of all, that you want to stand out and be different. When everybody else is trying to be sexy in one way, you notice that you're different. It reminds me of what Coco Chanel says. To be irreplaceable, one must always be different. Yes. I love that. So, love let me teach you what sexy is all about. Sexy is not about skin and just certain types of the body. Sexy is about shape and being sensual. So, number one, I'm going to show you a dress right here. This is a good idea of a dress, an example that shows you shape. It takes in your waist. The waist is one of the most sexiest feminine parts of a woman's body, so you really want to highlight that. And as you notice, it doesn't show off too much skin. And what I chose that I think is really sensual is a woman's shoulder. I love when women bare their shoulders because it shows strength and confidence. Think about like Charlize Theron. I love, Tamar, you know that's my favorite look on you because Save you've me. got such good shoulders. Okay, Lonnie, all the wizard. And come on over here to the back. If you have something that shows off more of like a racer back, a racer back looks good on every body because it allows your shoulder blades to show. And that's a really alluring thing to see. Like Zoe Zaldana does it all the time. So this is a good idea for you. <laughs> all right, well next up is Miranda Wright from Urbana, Ohio. And she has a mommy fashion question. Take a look. Hi, my name is Miranda Wright. I'm 20 years old and I'm from Urbana, Ohio. I began watching the show when I was battling my postpartum depression. And getting to spend an hour a day with you girls really gave me the encouragement that I needed to get out of the woods. And even though my personality made it out, my outfits did not. Jeannie, is there a way that I can take my comfy clothes like leggings and yoga pants and make them cute? Oh, your baby's beautiful, Miranda. Okay, I have to tell you, before every show, we pray that our show touches yes. and encourages somebody out there. So you are that person. Thank you so much yes. for watching our show Don't and being up. that. Thank you. 100%. Number two, okay, I love you, but I love you too much more than leggings, okay? You're more than that. So I'm gonna teach you about Werapi. Werapi is my belief that fashion can change your mood from yes. the outside in. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, true. so example, if you're feeling lazy and you throw on sweatpants, guess what? You're gonna stay feeling lazy all day. If you run into somebody, you're gonna feel insecure and unconfident. If your man takes you out on a surprise date, you're not ready. So. I want you to learn wear So when it comes to feeling unmotivated, invest in citrus colors, like this top, okay? Citrus colors therapeutically lift your mood, okay? Any yellows, bright oranges, things, think like citrus fruits. Number two, if you're feeling depressed, patterns, you guys. This is why kids love patterns. Patterns like playfully just pick up the whole look altogether, okay? So here's a great mom outfit. And you can do some flats if you have to. Yeah. But heels will work too, all right? We've got one more right here in our studio audience. Akosua, where are you? And what's I'm your right question here. for Jeannie? Hello. Hello. 
So ladies, my question is, I'm applying to grad school to get my degree in marriage and family therapy, which oh. means I have a lot of entrance interviews. Right. So I want to show off my loud and trendy fashion sense, but I want to be professional. Right. So my question to you, what do I wear? Okay, Akasua, you got to dress to express. You dress to express you and your potential. So the potential of this interview is to show people that you are able to create a nice, relaxing environment for people to open up. These are serious topics that you're going to be giving right. advice about. So in order to do that, you want to bring in, think of like a very spa, a very tranquil like feeling. So going back to wear okay. I believe in colors that are very relaxing. So an outfit like this is perfect. Pastels, baby blues, sage green. Those are colors that like are healing colors. They kind of soften everybody in the energy immediately. And then something like this is professional. It's still young. It's still trendy. If you needed to take the blazer off, show off those sharp shoulders of yours later on. For cocktails, you can do that. But allow your personality to be framed with something that creates the best experience for everybody else. Yes. Does that make sense? I love yes. it. Yeah? I love it. That I'm so excited for you. Classy. But come on down here really quick. that have like such a great, exciting career in front of them. So we want to make sure that you nail those interviews and uh, feel confident walking in the door. So guess what? We are giving you this entire outfit. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to nail it. When it comes to our next guest, you know his name and you know his work. Mm -hmm. He's the co-founder of Def Jam Records, an entrepreneur and author. He's conquered every arena from music to clothing to stand up. And now he's out to change the way we eat with his latest book, The Happy Vegan. Please welcome Russell Simmons. <laughs> A lot of energy. I know. <laughs> okay, um, I'm excited to be here too. Yeah, we hope so. You should like be. <laughs> well, just a little bit ago, in girl chat, we were talking about Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon and how she just recently got engaged and how uh, Nick was wishing her well. And I remember uh, around Christmas time, you had put a post on Instagram about your ex wife, Kamora, and I thought it was so beautiful. I absolutely loved it. it. So, um, I want to ask you, why is having a good relationship with, with her important to you? Because we got kids together. Yeah, I love mean, that. I mean, but if you love so somebody, dumb. right, for, uh -huh. for 15 years, yeah. how could you not like them later? I mean, I, I think I find it you know, selfish. You raising kids, like, who raised you? Like, don't you know better? Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, like, you should always make sure that your relationship with your baby's mom is good or everybody that is involved in the process of your parenting, yeah. you know? Wow. So, that is very mature. Yes, you. and good yeah. advice. No, that is pretty... great advice. Well, thank you for saying and that. Great and advice. You know, I thought it was so dope. Mr. Simmons, you are so health conscious. What do you think is happening right now? What are your thoughts with the water situation in Flint, Michigan? Well, I'm going to Flint in a couple days, as a matter of fact. Mm. I'm, giving, I'm bringing a gift from my, my rush card company, you know, water. But it's, everybody can give water, and we can right. all support in that way. But, I mean, we need the governor's hand cu in cuffs, right? We need, like, we need, if this was Beverly Hills, Yo, if, if this Speaker. happened yeah. in Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. first of all, they would have found out in two minutes, yeah. and everybody would have been in trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't poison the whole community. Almost every kid may have brain damage. No. Wow. It's worse than people are saying. Are you wow. And they've known wow. for longer than they've admitted. Yeah. And there's a lot, you know, environmental racism. Mm. Wow. The governor, what, what does he care? First of all, he's a conservative governor. Mm -hmm. There's black people there. They don't vote for him, and they're poor. So let him, you know what I'm saying? He just really let it happen. Mm -hmm. And it would never happen. Never. In a community where people had wealth and influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's, that's Never. You know, that's, that's real. That's, that's true. That's a really good It point. leads me to a, a thing they need. They not only need to be evacuated or, or build, build a new infrastructure. I mean, it's a lot of money has to be a pumped lot. in there. And yeah. a lot of support has to be pumped into Flint. And they're still not moving quick enough. Mm -hmm. they right. Need to get, I mean, not, they're moving very slow, you know? So we're going to try to put a foot up there, you know, move them faster. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way you corrected yourself. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll on TV, but, yeah, okay. but it's real, though. We got to yeah. really, as a community, we have yeah. to, all of us as Americans, we can't let this happen. Yeah. Very so important. tell me all about this book. I'm really interested. It's, 
It's a very simple way to transition to a plant-based diet. Because, really? I mean, I write simple books. My daughter told me that my books are remedial at best. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. and she was 12 when she said that. Oh, so. my gosh. <laughs> It's a simple book. It's easy. You know, it's like everybody thinks it's expensive yeah. to be vegan. That's not true because being a vegan, you could go to the Chinese restaurant. If you're in the hood, they definitely always got a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. And I don't care if you want, like, you don't want Chinese broccoli, What'd they got order? broccoli. If you uh -huh, don't want okay. their spinach, they got spinach. Uh -huh. If you don't want whatever it is that you thought they have at a Chinese restaurant and you're in the hood, they got what you want. <laughs> so wow. you could have eggplant, curry, tofu, black bean sauce or garlic sauce with lots of you know, brown, little brown rice and a lot of vegetables. And, you know, you, you can go to Taco Bell and get a, a, a bean burrito and get guacamole on it, right? Wow. There's a lot of ways around it. And as you start to move towards uh, being a vegan, you feel better and you find more stuff to eat. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in instituting Meatless Mondays because of your influence, so we have to thank you for yes. that. Oh, so right. We're gonna try. Let's start. I'm gonna really try. going it's to try. It's not hard, though, for real. You'll see the book of teachers, it's real easy, and you'll save a lot of money going vegan. Yes. Really? Yes. yes. That's good to know, because yeah. the misperception is that being yeah, organic, organic is, is so expensive. expensive. Right. And, yeah, but what's but, priceless is what I, I love that you said feeling good. Yes. You'll feel it immediately. Yeah. Immediately, that that's right. Now, there's an international campaign that has been growing recently that encouraged people not to eat meat on Mondays to improve their health and the health of the planet. Now, I know you meat eaters like me out there may think this is <laughs> impossible for you to do, but today we're showing you some recipes that will have your mouth craving meatless in no time. Wow. So get ready for some meatless Monday dinners. <laughs> Okay, I need this in my life right now. So now I have to say, these recipes are inspired by Mr. Russell Simmons. So you guys heard him earlier. He's very serious about being a vegan, and he makes a lot of sense around here in these streets, <laughs> which means he doesn't, eat, he doesn't eat meat or dairy. So those of you who are thinking about going vegan but aren't quite sure yet about it, you can baby step your way into being a vegetarian, which means you won't eat meat, but you still get that ooey, gooey, delicious cheese in your life, okay? <laughs> yes. We have these meatless dishes that are gonna help you. They aren't vegan, but they are vegetarian, okay? This is not a vegan meal, ladies and gentlemen. Don't send me no emails, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna kick it off with the bean and veggie enchiladas. Now, everybody know I am famous for my enchiladas, yeah. correct? Yeah. Oh, my God, they're so good. So, you know, I have no worry about this right here. So the first thing <laughs> I did was saute and dice a half red pepper, and I diced a green pepper, and I put a couple corn in here, I diced a small red onion, and two diced medium zucchinis. Now, I like all these ingredients that I put in here. I have to at least like it. Now, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of chili powder, and a teaspoon of cumin, and I added two cans of black beans. Now, I'm gonna put me some salt and pepper in her, because we got to like season that. her a little season bit. It. Yeah, and these trees, we need us some flavor, all right? Now, once everything is mixed up, remove it from the heat, and you're going to begin to fill your tortillas, just like this. Oh. Now, you don't want to put too much in there because it ain't going to close. Right. But what I am going to put a lot of is a whole bunch of cheese. <laughs> 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 Yummy. <laughs> Sorry, Russell. <laughs> Love you, though. <sighs> All right, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna fold it just like this, and you're gonna put it side down in an already sprayed, um, what's this? Yeah. A casserole dish, yes. why don't you do it? Just like this, <laughs> face it down. And then you're gonna pour you some enchilada sauce over your, ooh, Lord, won't he do it? Yes, he oh, will. Hallelujah. Yes, over your enchilada. Now, this is really easy, guys. You can get this pre-made at any grocery store. It doesn't taste too bad. Wow. And then what you're going to do, you're going to take you a little bit of cheese like I have right here in my hand. A little. A little. Just okay. a little bit, Russell. Not even a lot. We're not even going to do you like that. <laughs> not at all. Let's because we believe in up. your vegan food challenge. I'm here for it. But you really do know that you can actually get that same kind of cheese. You can get a vegan version of yeah. it. Yeah, but I ain't ready for okay. all that right now. Okay. All right. So what you're going to do <laughs> is you're going to put your oven to work now. You you're gonna pop this pan into a 375 degree oven for 30 minutes, and when it's done, check this out. Look at him, look at him. It's gonna look just like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and to make it all pretty, I'm gonna sprinkle some of my favorite cilantro on it as a finishing touch. Okay, ladies, 
Y'all know I'm the enchilada queen in these yeah. streets. I can't taste wait. Taste it. Let's see. What you think? Okay, while y'all tasting it, get ready for another meatless dish. You guys are gonna love this. My recipe is a spin on the famous Philly cheese steak. I'm making portobello Philly. Yeah! Yeah! Now, in two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil, I'm simmering for seven minutes a half slice onion, four large sliced portobello mushrooms, one large slice red bell pepper, one and a half tablespoons of dried oregano, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Now, you turn down that heat a little bit, and you sprinkle the veggies with a tablespoon of flour, like that. Lonnie, and, I look good. I don't need to eat much. No, and a quarter cup of vegetable broth, mm -hmm. and about a tablespoon of soy sauce. Yeah, we don't want to mess you up, okay? That gives you that sauce. Make sure everything is coated really, really well. And once this starts to simmer, you take it off the heat. And you add some provolone cheese to it. Like that. You got to take it off that heat so it yeah, don't thank you. And then you just simply cover it. Oh. And when you cover it, you lay it there for about two minutes. And this is going to allow the cheese to melt. And once it's melted, you spoon the mix into toasted buns, and it will come out looking like this. Yes! It's so cheesy and delicious, I swear you won't even miss meat. I've yeah. tried it. So taste it, girls. Give okay. it a taste. It's so First of all, that lunny. enchilada was amazing. Oh, I'm almost done you. with it. Oh. <laughs> Cheese, please. <laughs> well, with these Meatless Monday recipes, you'll be well on your way to a healthier lifestyle, won't they, Tay? Yes. Huh?